يكون لك فيه طيب قول ياسمين طيب الحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله If you remember يا شباب Before رمضان Or even before رمضان Malak she had presentation regarding Muslims in Burma Do you remember that time or was that too way ago? This is when Yasmin was supposed to present about you know, the Muslims in China. But because Yasmin is Yasmin, Alhamdulillah, it happened by the end of the day. And now we have Yasmin with her presentation. Yeah, Yasmin, it's all yours. Wait, yeah, okay. Shabab, Shabab. Okay, Malak. Hold on. Wait. Malak. Turn one. I did my like job with A, with Mustafa. On. This is yours, okay? I'm going to remain silent, take a break. You are going to be the MC. Ma. I just wanted to say, Lo Samahtu, guys. This is a very Wait, serious. Ah. Yeah, this is good. This is good. This is good. That's good. That's good. That's good. Sorry, I saw the, the kids who are running keep over one, here. Keep one on. Uh, there's, there's more on the other side, yes, Ali. Lo Samahtu, guys. So this is a very serious topic. I'm sure all of you have read about it or seen headlines about it, whether in... Um, news from your own country or western media it's something that's starting to get talked about more now no this is good this is good that's good yeah it's something that's been happening for a long time and you all need to focus and concentrate and try and absorb as much information as you can so when people this is very serious guys it's a very serious topic so when people ask you about it in the future you're able to talk about what's happening and give your own opinion as well and that you can't do that unless you know the hard facts. Okay, so because of the sensitivity of this topic, we need to make sure we give our full respect to the person presenting and the topic at hand. Sounds good? Just try, like there's people talking right now. There's no need to be talking. We're about to be um, learning about people who are being persecuted because they are Muslim. So let's give it our full attention and respect, inshallah. Give it up for Yasmin Ali. Okay. Assalamu alaikum, everyone. Today I'm here to educate you about what's happening. <laughs> okay, okay, I'm sorry. Okay. No, that didn't happen. I'm sorry. Okay. Stop making me laugh. Okay. Assalamu alaikum. Assalamu alaikum. Shut up. Stop. You're the one who made me laugh. It's me and talk to your presentation, please. If you are not able, let me know. We can do something else. Okay, okay. Assalamu alaikum everyone. Today I'm here to educate you about what's happening to the Igor Muslims in China. So before we get started, I just want you guys to know um, where it is. It's um, in the northwest area of China next to Russia and Mongolia. So what is happening in China? Does anyone have an idea? Uh, yeah. Segregation. Uh, yeah, okay. That, yeah, true. Killing, yeah, no, actually, no. Talk. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, which brings me into, um, my next topic. So technically, um, the Chinese national security is finding um, any um, Muslim woman in a hijab or any um, or any person which they suspect of a Muslim, and they're putting them in these um, re-education camps where um, Islam is not being allowed. They're teaching them their um, Chinese religion. Also. Um, they're putting them in these jails with these masks on because they think um, they have this virus of um, terrorism and they don't want it to spread. 
Um, here's a quick video about someone's experience in the re-education camp. You need a towel, GPS? Yes. Oh, okay. Okay, um, so as you can see, he was um, saying his perspective of what happened in the re-education camps and how he could um, how he could barely move and while he was sleeping he had to stand up. Also how he was being hung by his hands, um, his toes barely brushing the ground. Um, also how the, the national security wanted him to say that he was a terrorist and that he was um, threatening national security. Um, also, in China, the Muslims, um, they're being forced to drink alcohol and eat pork. And if one of them were caught um, fasting, they must break their fast by alcohol and pork. This is also their food on a daily basis. So, um, Thailand is returning refugees. Um, Thailand has adopted this in perspective of China about the Igor Muslims and how they are... Um, and how they're terrorists and how they carry a virus. So each day they're sending hundreds of um, refugees back to the re-education camp so they can get even more um, tortured to an extremism level. So the Han Chinese are taking over um, China. So um, China, um, China, it belongs, um, the part of China, it belongs to the Igor Muslims. And um, in earlier, before this started happening, um, the Han Chinese, they were only 20% of the, of the Xinjiang land, and now it is more than 90% of um, the Igor Muslims' land. So why are the Han Chinese immigrating? Um, China it is full of, um, it's full of oil and gas, and these expensive these expenses aren't anywhere. So the national security it is um, it's encouraging the Igor Muslims to come to come to Xinjiang. So 
they are and they're encouraging them by showering them with all this gas and oil so the Igbo Muslims can wash away. Here's a short video about how they're taking over um, Xinjiang. Huh? That's why? Oh. Okay, Here. this one? Oh. Okay, here we are. Okay, um, something I really liked about that video is when the man was saying how um, the Chinese national security is dragging the um, Igor Muslims out of Islam in general. So that was something that um, really came out to me. So um, how did this happen in the first place? So um, in April 2014, there was a bomb attack. Um, it killed about four people and 70 people were hurt. Um, the Chinese national security thought that the Igor Muslims, they were the main reason that this happened. Um, also, it happened again in May, which is when um, the Chinese national security started wanting all Igor Muslims out of China. Also, um, a bunch of websites are saying that the Igor Muslims uh, was the cause of this, such as Wikipedia. Okay, what can we do to help? Okay, um... Yeah, but um, if you s donate or, um, or send money, uh, the Chinese national security is the one who's going to take that money and it's not going to reach to the Igor Muslims. 
dirt and be education kit so you can see there's no way you can like talk to them. So yeah. <laughs> Yeah, there's also um, a petition that's being signed, um, and if it reaches, I think if it reaches to like a hundred thousand signatures, then it's gonna be um, brought to the White House. And um, but there has to be a hundred thousand signatures by thirty days. So you could like do like clubs in your school or something to where uh, to raise awareness uh, about about it, like to help the people in China. Yeah. Um. So I just wanted to show you guys the put. Oh shoot. The petitions. Um. After, if you guys want to sign the petition, um, going on. I think it reached like I think about ten thousand signatures. About. So yeah. Um. You guys might like. I was talking. Okay, I was talking to someone, and um, I was telling her about this petition, and she was saying that this, um, it's not going to help, and we can do um, more things, but actually, if you start off with a small step, it'll lead you to more steps. Um, there's a quote I like about that, which it says, the elevator to success is out of order. You'll have to use the stairs one step at a time, so if we um, start building the right way and try to find a way to help, then um, it's all over. All over. What's going to happen, Yasmin, I mean, if we sign the petition? I did not understand. What's going to change? Well, I mean, it's going to be taken to the White House, which... But then what's going to happen? At least more people will be informed. So what? Do you think, you think, do you think, you think the White House is going to inform Do you think them, Donald or? Trump is going to agree on that? Well... She has a question? Okay, well, um... If it's, okay, if, if a bunch of people agree about what's happening, if, if many people agree that um, about this, then they don't have a choice but to. Um, well, we don't have to give it to Donald Trump. Okay. I mean, um, some people um, might be like really touched by this, and they might um, care a lot. So they might like petitions might be made, and they might do presentations in the school. They can if they if they're not like me, and if they actually take action, then um, something can happen. Mm. Yeah, I'm, I'm waiting for the answer. Either Malek or Sally, go for the answer. Um. Yeah, I think. So actually, to repeat the question for uh, Sally again, for whoever may be listening, Sally was asking, raising awareness. What can raising awareness would do? Yes, we can be a lot of people, but we are not the people in power. So how can raising awareness would help? That that was the question. Yeah, please. Bro. So Sayyidina Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, if you see some oppression, you see something happening which is bad, which is wrong, some sort of injustice, oppression, you try to stop with your hand. If you don't have a capacity to do that, which is the case for us right now, then you should try to do it with your speech. And this is where it comes into, to raise awareness, it comes into speech. And if you don't have the capacity to do that, at least feel bad in your, hand, in your heart. So there are three levels of things that you can do as a Muslim. If you don't have the authority, yes, if you have the authority, you should go and stop it with your hand, with the force. But it, obviously, in this case, doesn't appear that we have that. Uh, some of our politicians in the Muslim land, they may have the capacity to do that. And unfortunately, they are choosing not to do that. So what we can do as an individual Muslim is do it by the speech, raising the awareness. Yeah. And maybe Kareem, he's sitting at the back, is going to have the power in a few years. You never know. I believe that Kareem is going to have the power to change it in a few years, inshallah. Yes, Malak, you wanted to add something? Do you agree that Kareem, inshallah, is going to have the power in a few years? Fine. 
Um, I also just want to open it up to discussion. We need to talk about this. Like each person needs to give their perspective. So Sally was saying that awareness is important, but it's not the complete change. If I understood correctly, and I completely agree. I think raising awareness is just the first step. For example, you ask people in the Middle East, especially Palestine, has kind of just become like a logo. It's just like a keychain, like you walk around holding. You're like, yeah, free Palestine, free Palestine. What does that mean? What does it mean to actually be aware of what's happening? Are you aware of the different governments that claim to be representing Palestinians or the Palestinian cause? Are you aware of the different um, like political parties that are fighting for Palestinian rights and Palestine itself? So what it means to be aware, it means to study the issue deeply enough so that when you have the capacity to make a change, you're over there and you're not learning from step one. You're not saying, yeah, I'm going to be an opposition fighter in Syria, I'm going to do this, I'm going to do that. You show up, you know nothing about the different fronts, for example, or of the different territories occupied by by different groups. So what, what's important about awareness is that you're, it's part of your goal. It's part of your dream at the end. It's one step to achieving what you want to do. And my personal opinion is that us uh, here in the United States of America, we have, we have infinite abilities and infinite possibilities and infinite opportunities here for us. So what our duty is, is not to just see this stuff and say, yeah, that sucks. Um, let's make dua. Let's do this. Let's do that. But if you were to dedicate your entire life for this, if you had an entire generation that was working solely for the Muslim Ummah around the world, you have infinite possibilities of what could happen. Because it's not all in the hands of political representatives, presidents back home, this type of stuff. The power does come from the people and social movements have always been the first to inspire change. Prophet Muhammad وسلم, did he immediately go him and for example five Muslim, five Muslim followers, did they go overthrow Quraysh? Or what was it first? It was literally a revolution. It was a social movement. It was a social movement in that it changed the hearts and minds of the people, made them aware of the ignorance in their society, and then once they came to power by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's will only, they were able to make a difference. So I think the last thing Muslims should be is hopeless. Because we have everything at our disposal. But I want to hear what all of you guys think. What are your personal goals? What are the causes that you personally feel with? So anyone who wants to... Just talk about it. Noor, your brother? Maryam? Um, I feel like that hadith that Amma said was like, people are taking that hadith as an advantage and like doing the, they think that the most they can do is just speech. We have um, technology that we have the social media and we can use that like I feel like we're using social media in such a bad way and we can really like use it for something useful yeah um wait does anyone have any questions what do the boys think because I it's honestly the worst if you go to a protest and there's like three-fourths of girls you ask where are the Muslim men you want to hear their opinions you want to hear what they think what do you think I think uh, since since the Muslim Ummah is increased, well, the the religion of Islam is increasing, like just going higher and higher, and then it, like a, a large part, a somewhat, and in the future, uh, if we gain enough, then we like powerful people, like in polit like politicians, if they are like in the religion of Islam, maybe we can make a change in the, and then possibly have the Muslim Ummah would be the only. Who wants to talk, who wants to touch on that? I think the only way to change like one of those situations, not only in China, even in Burma, even Syria, Palestine, everywhere, is like other than understanding the issue, other than studying the issue itself, is by educating ourselves. Let's say I became a businessman. I help in every single penny I have. Let's say, uh, let's say I studied the law. I help with the law. I, I defend the, the, the Muslims' um, cases. I, I, I bring them to America. I try to, try to educate them, try to help them in every single... But first, educate ourselves. That's the only way we can change. Think. Does anyone have any questions? 
think Mariam from Clover is a winner. Where I am? What's my name? Who brought me here? Yes, I have a question. Who actually did the bombings? Like, do we know? Um, I think the people who did the bombings, they don't, um, they don't like want anyone to know who did it, and they want the evil Muslims to be blamed. So I don't think they. Do you know who did the? Oh, just to, just for the bombing comma, even if we're going to go by secular standards and let's say international law and all this stuff, a collective punishment is completely illegal, like by every and any standard. So even if there were a few people who killed people unjustly, that does not give the Chinese state the right to persecute an entire population. Okay, so I'm going to go back to what Malak asked, because that was my orig original thing. Um, so, a few weeks back, during the summer, Habiba had a talk at MAPS, and she talked to us about what was going on. And I think what she really said was, what she said was really great. And she told us that whenever she was at school and she had projects, she would always try to tie in what was going on around the world to Muslims. And I thought that was a really good idea because then people would realize that she's always making this connection and that there's really something big going on. And I feel if we do this, like it's, it's a small thing, but time by time people will realize and they will, want, they will be curious and they will learn more. I don't know. I want to hear the boys. I want to hear the boys. What do you have to say? So, um, I remember 2001 uh, when the first intifada of Palestine happened. Uh, I was like eight years or nine years at, at this time. Uh, we had like a protest everywhere. This is not like the goal that I'm talking about. But we, like as a kid that nine years old, we try what we try to do to like to find each company uh, is supporting the Israeli government. And we tried like uh, to pick up completely all of their uh, food, all of their services, and everything related to them. So I would say like there are two things that we can harm uh, those people to stop harassing our our Muslim people. It's like economically and other way. Uh, let's talk about the economically right now, uh, which is the thing that we can do at least like. Don't go and invest in China. Don't go and uh, and buy their products. Uh, if you can make a research and get like a list of companies who are supporting the uh, the security over there, uh, try like to convince your people in your countries. Don't buy uh, their products. We are like one 1.5 billion people. If we stop purchasing their their stuff, they will be in a in a hard situation. This is at least like we can do at this time, and also like. To keep telling yourself every day that two people have a right on you and you need to, to fulfill the right and ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala all the time to give you forgiveness that you are not helping them and try like when you, when you have like a good time don't forget them this is this is the most important thing if you are like enjoying your time and enjoying your life don't forget there are other people they are staying in prisons and everywhere in the world not only in China and every in every single place that they are not able like to see their families they can't see their children they can't even like talk to their mothers and like their biggest hope is just like to hug their mothers and their mothers to hug them so keep them in your mind all the time uh, think about them completely like like I would say like there's something an extreme to happen but this is not now it might be having some time in the future but at least for now economically like try to, to, to trace where they are coming from what the companies that are supporting them try to record them if you have like a Chinese friend, talk to them. I have a Chinese friend, I talked to him before. Tell them that we are suffering because of your government. I had, I had, an, I had an intern in my company, like in the last two days, I was telling him that your company is like, is, uh, uh, is, is, is hitting our people in your country. And this is so bad. You should, we should like uh, uh, talk and, and have like a higher speech and loud speech and telling them that this is so bad. And we are not welcoming that. And like, like exactly like during the World Cup in, in Russia, 
I would see a lot of Muslims and even a lot of Egyptians, they went over there and, and like they were uh, attending the World Cup matches. That's fine if you are if you are seeing that's fine to attend the matches in, in Russia. But do you think like you should make like a tourism in, in Russia where they are killing our people in Syria? Like for me this was doesn't make any sense at all. Like why should you go and invest and pay money for them and why should like cut tickets to their country and, and uh, make reservation at their hotels and attend matches and act like you are a Muslim in the country that is uh, oppressing like millions of people in Syria and you are like you are finally okay and watching them and even if you are watching and opening the TV and watching these matches and you are completely fine with that for me this was like doesn't make sense at all you, you won't be in a situation in the future like when someone and you are under uh, attack and you are under oppression from some people and your friends in the other places are looking at them and they are like watching their games, they are watching their movies or they are doing whatever thing and they don't care about you. You might be in this situation in the future. This might happen to every one of us and every single one of us. I, I remember when I was reading about Argentine uh, during the World Cup in 78 uh, the World Cup happened in Argentina and they were under a military uh, uh, rule and regime what happened that the people that they said when they won the World Cup the people in the prisons we were like we thought when we have the World Cup in our country people will pay an attention to our case and that, that we, we made our voice loud loud enough to tell people how uh, how awful we are suffering in our prisons and we we just hearing people are celebrating winning the World Cup outside the prison and they said how much bad this was to them like this is the same for us when you start like uh, uh, like to see people in every place, all Muslims, and they don't care about the people in Syria, in Palestine, in Egypt, in Libya, in, uh, uh, in Tunis, in Al Maghrib, in Sudan, in every single Muslim country, in every single place in the world, they are suffering, and you are just like living your life, and you don't care about anything. All of what you care about is yourself, your food, your uh, your enjoyment. Just keep this in mind. What should you do? At least like educate yourself. Find the path that you should go. Like don't like prioritize yourself and prioritize your tasks uh, in the right way, in the right order. Learn about your dean. Follow and follow news about people and keep them in your diet, keep them in your mind. Tell people and, and speak loud about that. You have at least here like uh, some freedom that does, we don't have in our home countries. You have it. Speak loud. Tell people about that. Make, like try to boycott other people. We have seen in, in, in Europe that um, there was a, a party in, uh, in, in, the, in the country, so-called Israel, that they have a party and, and they are uh, inviting many uh, singers from all over the world. And there was a movement in, in, in Europe which is called BDS. They said, okay, no, we're not going to allow any singer to come to our occupied land. And they tried to reach out to them and they started like uh, spamming them. And they stopped them from coming to, uh, to the occupied land in, of Palestine. Same happened when the, uh, the national team of Argentina tried to come to play in occupied land. People start like attacking those people, the Argentine uh, 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 football plays, and and this is preventing them. Like speak loud. Which one of you gave him the microphone? <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> so it, it's like it's warm in, in my heart, <laughs> like especially when we watch these I videos. You know, this is all I, I like this, you know, whatever I know if we leave you till tomorrow, Fajr are gonna keep continuing in this, I'm sure, and actually this is something I just wanna make sure that you really, you can feel the heat in the heart of some people whenever we touch those issues. And this is something that really, something that we should really all have is whenever this topic is open, we don't care and we go to food and ever whenever you're looking to your Facebook, you see something in China, you simply swipe and move to another thing. This is something what I would love to see. So before we go into more stories, I just want to highlight, you can feel the heat coming out of his heart. And you can see the mistake, you know, that Malay gave him the microphone, otherwise I'm not going to be leaving. <laughs> okay. yeah, thank you, thank you. What time do you have the voice activity? Is it 2.10 uh, or 2.40? We are, we should be...